Globo is a London-listed mobile applications and platform provider. It started out as a company based exclusively in Greece, but it's expanded internationally. And in fact, it's seen its shares rise 50% over the last three months. We're talking now to the Chief Executive Officer, Kostas Papadimitrakopoulos. Welcome. Um, Thank you. Tell me a little bit about the business, because I say you, you've expanded well outside Greece. And this is a company that's uh, now providing applications pretty much right the way around the world. Yes, I mean, um, originally Globo has started back in Greece in 1997, uh, focused on web technologies and in-business software for businesses and uh, government. Um, since we listed in 2007 uh, on London Stock Exchange on the A market, uh, we, we actually incepted an idea of building a platform that could actually mobilize any kind of e-business or business software uh, onto any mobile phone. Now, the initial steps within this, this space were difficult, but we managed within two years to succeed and actually build um, a very solid revenue that today represents 50% of, of Globo. Um, as you probably have seen uh, in the latest trading update, we have published um, revenues of around 45 million uh, euros this, this year for 2011, increased by almost 50%. Uh, but uh, even more profits are way bigger than this 50 percent. So um, uh, this, this, um, uh, this segment of our business today represents um, um, our future. Uh, so we are totally focused in expanding internationally. Uh, it uh, contributes more than 80 percent of our profits. So in a sense, we're not, yet, we're not anymore you know, a Greek company. We may, ha mm. we may base or have certain employees in Greece, but uh, we are expanding internationally. We have revenues from more than 20 countries now. And, and of course, margins are, are, are far better outside Greece, aren't they? So obviously your expansion, and you say your profits are rising exponentially far greater than, than the, your revenues. Correct, because the business model is totally different. It's not based on, um, on the professional services and uh, manpower effort. It's totally based on software as a service offerings that uh, centralized are offered to mobile network operators and effectively to their customers, whether they are um, uh, living in Indonesia, in Latin America or in Africa. So um, there, is, there is a huge market out there and the mobile uh, life you know, becomes, becomes part of our everyday life. And um, um, uh, the global mobile population grows uh, very, very fast. Tell me a little bit more about exactly what it is you've got. How would a user see it any differently from any other platform? Okay, the, the, the platforms we, we have are actually divided in, in two areas. One is a consumer platform that um, uh, people in emerging markets holding very simple phones uh, can use to actually access um, uh, social networks and email. So it can actually turn any feature phone into a smartphone in a sense. But uh, our newly launched product, Go Enterprise Server, which is um, focusing on more sophisticated customers and um, uh, markets uh, like uh, UK, Western Europe, US and Canada, uh, can actually turn um, a, a phone into an application environment that is fully controlled by the enterprise. So if I may show you here, um, you see here I have my phone, I have my personal applications like Facebook, Twitter, um, but here there is an application called Go Enterprise. So by clicking this, I actually enter a new application desktop that has numerous applications which are provided by the server. So it's a folder with subfolders or sub applications? In a sense, but they're not folders, just it's, it's this fully functional applications right. mm. that are rendered dynamically into any kind of phone. So regardless if you're using an iPhone, an Android phone, a Blackberry or a Windows phone, you can get the exact same experience by interacting uh, with this platform and effectively with the back office systems that coexist in the company. So what would the potential investor be buying into here? What's 2012 going to look like? What's, what are you expecting to happen this year for the expansion plan? You know, uh, the company has, has, um, has proven the past two years that it has the ability and the technology uh, to do something very, very big in a global scale. Uh, this market is, is massive and it's still increasing. Uh, companies like Blackberries 
and uh, sorry, REAM and uh, Apple. Yes, research in motion. Yeah, yeah research in motion. Mm. Uh, they have succeeded a lot of things, and despite problems that they may face, they are still growing. So uh, we think that within this growing market, global uh, can 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 achieve a certain penetration and uh, uh, we're still in a very very small you know fraction of this so I would say that a sustainable 50% of increase is there of organic increase in revenue in revenue but underlined but even underpinned by even more profits uh, due to the fact that uh, the gross profits from this business are way bigger um, um, this this can mean that uh, uh, global can become you know a hundred million or even more company within the next one or two years. Now I said you started off in Greece and yeah. of course you expanded internationally. What's going to happen with that uh, the, the the Greek bit of your business? Obviously today Greece represents less than fifteen percent of our mm -hmm. gross profit, and uh, because it is a distraction for us. Uh, to actually consume resources that uh, can be focused in the international expansion, uh, it is our intention to spin off the Greek business um, in such a way that we don't have any management um, uh, interference or commitments, uh, and of course retain any interest that could build up a certain value at a certain point. Now, this transaction together with additional acquisitions that we may pursue, will actually turn the group in a full international revenue group and um, we, are, um, we are working uh, towards this direction and be obviously um, uh, focusing in completing these transactions within 2012. Um, I have already said that your shares have risen 50% in the last three months, but in fact they have been higher um, yeah. than they are even at the moment. Um, what, what's going on with the share price at the moment? Um, what's been priced in and what advantage do you think investors that are coming in now could still achieve? I think, I think the share price um, has a great potential and um, having achieved a significant fundraising uh, in, back one year from now, in the beginning of 2011, uh, oversubscribed by uh, huge investors like uh, Legal and General, BlackRock, Fidelity, yeah. which now represent more than 50% of the share register of the company. Um, I think that the company is well supported by very strong investors to pursue future growth plans. So uh, our share price uh, shows uh, a correlation you know, with the Greek rumors. So you saw the share price rising um, from February 2011 mm -hmm. from 15 pence to 30 pence almost on April. And then when the Greek problems arise, mm -hmm. you know, the share price collapsed uh, down to 15 pence again, and now it's back to 23. Um, it's, it's obvious that, you know, there's, there's a misunderstanding uh, on, uh, on what Globo uh, does, mm -hmm. in a sense, and how much it is dependent on the Greek uh, market. But as I said before, you know, just 15% of our profits are coming from Greece. And uh, as long as we, you know, detach this part of the business, then Globo is purely international. Okay, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks indeed for joining us. Costas, thank you very Papa much. Papa Dimitrikopoulos there with a look at his company, Globo. This film is for educational and leisure purposes only. Proactive Investors does not provide investment advice. The company is a publisher and is not registered with or authorized by the Financial Services Authority. Please refer to the full terms and conditions on the Proactive Investors website.